This time, I'm going to talk about how to calculate CVA with Monte Carlo simulation in Python. What is Credit Valuation Adjustment CVA? If we have a portfolio, we have counterparty. In case the counterparty default, we might lose our investment. So CVA is the market value of counterparty credit risk. Another term we are going to use is expected exposure. So expected exposure is the expected average credit exposure on a future target date, conditional on positive market values. When we calculate credit valuation adjustment, we care about the positive value of our investment. That means if our counterparty default, how much we are going to lose for our investment. In this case, we only concern about positive value of our investment. When we consider if we default, how much our counterparty might lose, that means debt valuation adjustment. In that case, we are going to concern about the negative value of our investment. But this is not we care about in this talk. So how do we calculate CVA? CVA can be calculated with this formula. Capital T is time of maturity. R is recovery rate. As you know, loss given default LGD equal to 1 minus recovery rate. E is the expected exposure at time T. And the PD is risk neutral probability of counterparty default, or sometimes we call it probability of default. If you want to know how to model EAD, PD, and LGD, you can watch my previous video, EAD, PD, and LGD modeling for EL estimation from this URL. Now let's take a look at my implementation and assumptions. In this example, I use whole white model to generate future yield curves. And also I use an interest rate swap as an example in this talk. This interest rate swap has a notional $10 million, fixed rate is 2%, and will be matured in five years. And also, I used QuantLib library to evaluate interest rate swap for NPV calculation. Also, I use US Treasury yield to build the current interest rate curve. The recovery rate is set to 40% in this example. And the as of date for this calculation is May 1st, 2019. I got US Treasury yield data from this website. I inputted US Treasury yield data on this spreadsheet here. And on the left side, I input more data points up to 30 years. And for the data point, we don't have original data. I use linear interpolation to calculate a value. And then I draw the US Treasury yield graph. It looks like this. Now I'll show you how I implemented this model in Python. 
This is our assumption. We will run simulation 50 times and the reverting speed is 0 0.33 and volatility is 0 0.02. First, I read this yield data from the Excel file. I build the yield curve and then I generated the different paths for each simulation. Here I define our transaction. It's a vanilla swap. We are the receiver with notional $10 million and fixed rate is 0 0.02. Here, I use the pricing engine in this quant lib to calculate the NPV for each simulation path. At the end, I sum up all the exposure. We have positive value with the formula I showed you before and the calculated CVA. Let's run the program. This is the yield curve we just loaded from Excel. And even though we run the simulation for 50 times, I only showed you 10 paths here. This is generated zero curves. And this one is generated forward yield curves. And based on all those simulation paths, we calculated mean level of reversion. You can see the mean level of reversion is deep down between one year and two year. If we check the original yield curve we loaded from Excel file, you can also see the yield really deep down at the beginning and then come up. And after we calculated expected exposure, we got rid of the negative value. We only save the positive expected exposure looks like this. And then we got our CVA as $6,901. Now, how about we increase the number of simulation, say 500. You can see the CVA value increased to over 9,000. If we change this 500 to 1,000, we run the program. You can see the CVA changed to 9,342. And if we change to 2,000 instead of 1,000 times, you can see the CVA changed to 9,457. And comparing with the previous value, 9,342, it didn't change much. That tells us the number of simulation after a certain number, the calculated result will be stable.
Now I'll change the number of simulation back to 50 and check out the impact of the reversion speed. If we say the reversion speed is not 0.33 but it is 0 0.03. Let's run the simulation. You can see now the CVA changed to over 19,000. So the CVA amount changed a lot if we change the reversion speed. Let's put it back to 0.33. How about sigma, the volatility? If we change sigma to a smaller number, for example, 0.01. You can see the CVA changed to 1733. Now if we change the sigma to an even smaller number, 0 0.005, if we rerun the program, it gives us the result. The CVA will become 149. When the reversion speed is 0 0.33, you can see the generated forward yield curve merge together after about 10 years. But when we put reversion speed at 0 0.03, you can see the generated forward yield curve. They don't merge together even after 25 years. This is because the reversion speed is too slow. Now let's put the reversion speed back to 0 0.33. When the sigma is 0 0.2, you can see the generated forward yield curve started with different value but merge together after about 12 or 13 years. When the volatility is very small, for example, if we input the sigma as 0 0.001, if we rerun the program, you can see the generated forward yield curve almost show the same path and also the positive expected exposure is zero. This is because the sigma is too small so the small volatility couldn't generate enough variety of the simulation path. So this is our observations. As number of simulation increases calculated CV value becomes stable. Reversion speed will affect calculated CV value heavily. Volatility will affect calculated CV value dramatically. These observations tell us when we build a model, we not only have to make sure our formula and our methodology is correct. We always have to validate our assumptions. This is how I calculate CVA with Monte Carlo simulation in Python. Please provide your comments and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.